there's also probably a lot going on behind the scenes in terms of balancing your merchandising control and tuning and automation. Absolutely. This is just sort of a look behind the scenes of, of what is it work, how, are, how is our search working? The SLI product lets us actually tune specific results so we can go into the system and say, hey, we really want to showcase this vase as being the first thing people see. So you can see from the slide that the tunings, there's a, whenever there's a score there, that that will override everything. And next, the system will use its um, machine learning. So as people search for large vases, this is the product, this Evelyn large vase is the product that they're clicking on the most. So it would start to go, it would move its way up to the top, but yet not override what we said needs to be first. The next number down is the score. That's the relevancy score. So it from the slide before where you know it's using it's coming up with this number based on all these tags to say hey this is this is the right product um, this then takes the next step in deciding what product comes first and finally we've actually um, also imported this rpv value which we've taken the last 30 days of our products for whoever saw this product how much money did we make off of people that we we got all the way to that product. So we have a system where once that score, if the score is even in the case of the Luana and the Cora vase, we want it to sort in order of revenue per visit because we want whatever is making us the most money to show up first, assuming that the relevancy of those products are equal. That is great. That is great. Well. Now, I guess th this also helps us look and see, and the, obviously the results here are not exactly what you see, but you, you can right in that way. Absolutely. So it goes beyond machine learning. So there's only so much we don't want to get into tuning a lot of our products because that would just be a never-ending battle that we could never tune every single phrase. So what we do on my team is we try to look at trends and understand what how people are searching um, what's the conversion rate for that type of search um, like here you'll see like when you search by by type it's indicative that you're earlier on in your journey you haven't decided what type of plate you want but then once you start to search by a collection name you know you know our products you're looking for something specific it makes sense that the conversion rate is higher for those customers. Um, and some people, you know, then there's all sorts of other ones. You can keep going down the list, but in this category for entertaining material was the most important. So when we learn how our customers are searching, that helps us understand what we need to test to see how it's performing and what what levers we need to do. Like, do we need to change the, the relevancy algorithm? Do we need to tune more? What What's trending and you know what can we do to help improve our year over year growth so we watch that very carefully um, so here's so what we'll do is we also look through our failed searches and we work with the teams the buying teams to say hey these are these uh, phrases uh, we we should have products like this why is it not work you know why aren't we finding anything do we need to create um, synonyms and what's the best synonym or hey do we you know should we um, um, should we be buying these things in this case just tuning these 27 terms in three months time led to an additional one hundred thirty two thousand dollars of revenue so I mean the over 12 months it will lead to that much so it's it shows the importance of like you can't you know, there's always machine learning, but there's always a human element as well to understand that, hey, like we don't, we're not putting the right text into our products to be able to be found by that machine, or we need more tags. That is awesome. That is a lot of extra pie servers and shrimp cocktails and cupcake towers. <laughs> exactly.